What up, YouTube fam, queens, kings, everything in between? Uh, super excited about this video today. So as you saw in the title, Abby and I are going to be giving our top pros and cons as to why we are married, but we live separately. Um, I think this is a really cool opportunity because we don't see a lot of this on YouTube, uh, this kind of content. And so, yeah, I think it's really, um, really cool for us to be able to share that with you. Um, if you are at all interested, um, I know we haven't been on this space in quite a while. We kind of just threw up a video last week after like four months and y'all were like, what the hell? So if you're interested, I am going to give a more intimate discussion as to why that was, a little bit of backstory on that, and also my intention as to why we are coming back into this space. Um, so if you're interested in seeing that part of the video, go to our Patreon. Abby will put the link in the description. Um, we're also very grateful for you, um, but that is not the space for this general video. So let's get into them reasons why we are married and live separately. as to why Abby and I are married, but we live separately is space. That's an obvious one. So Abby and I, she's always been independent. So when we got in an 80 square foot box with two animals, like that was gonna be challenged. And if you're ever frustrated or you just want some time alone, it's really hard. I mean, obviously we can go outside, uh, but you know, if you wanna be in your home, I mean, that looked like me going to the cab and closing the partition door to have room away from her. So, and vice versa. So. Yeah, it's just now we have our own spaces, our own, you know, respectful spaces. And that way she has somewhere to retreat. I have somewhere to retreat. And it just helps, just helps you breathe in the relationship. It's not going to take away because you, you know, you have your own room to do whatever it is that you want to do. And so space is vital. The next pro on our list is having the storage and space for our separate hobbies. When we lived together in the van, there simply wasn't room for a lot of stuff. So we focused on our shared hobby of spending time outside, hiking, that sort of thing. After we got a second vehicle, we were able to, you know, expand our hobbies. Nikki got a drum set and some more cooking supplies. And I got a lot more art supplies. Y'all know how much I love making art. Well, when we lived together in the van, I hardly spent any time doing that because there just simply wasn't the space or storage to have all the stuff I really wanted and to, wanted to explore. So I'm really grateful that having this space gives me so much more storage. Literally this whole bench that I'm sitting on is full of art and photography supplies. And I have this even more table space to set up um, an art studio indoors. So on rainy days like this, I can do my hobby, do my art inside without you know, it being a problem. Pro number two of why we were married, but we live separately is that I don't have to have the litter box for the cat in the van. I'm more of a dog person. I, that is not to say that I don't, you know, care for cats. Like Abby had three when we first met and I spent a year very allergic. That speaks to the dedication I had for that, for building that relationship. Cause I literally couldn't breathe for a year. Um, I got immune somehow and you know, I, I enjoyed the cats in the extent that I could. Um, but I'm just more of a dog person, you know, like cats are bitches. Let's be honest. They, you know, they don't want to hang out with their owner most of the time. Um, but I love Coco Mochi, the cat that we have now, because Coco Mochi is like a human and he has taken to me very quickly and cuddles with me and is, you know, Abby adores him. And so I very much love Coco Mochi, but I am just, I truly am not one to have, I already have my composting shit bucket in the van. I don't need to have an animal's shit bucket as well. Um, and also I don't like him crawling all over the kitchen counter. She knows that it, it drives me insane. And ever since my sweet baby bear passed, I don't deal with animal hair in here. So that is a huge pro that Abby can still have her loving Coco Mochi in her space. I can visit and I can not deal with, um, the stuff that I don't want to deal with. So super big pro. Another pro of having two rigs instead of just one is that we can work separately. We both work random jobs that really can happen like anywhere in the country. So like currently right now, I'm headed to a festival to do some tattoo work. And for various reasons, Nikki doesn't want to go. And I'm fine with that. And she doesn't have to. I can go and accept the job and do the work and not feel guilty that I'm dragging her along. And she can do something that feels more aligned with her soul. And I love that for both of us. Pro number three, why we live separately 
as a married couple is we don't ever get tired of each other. So like I said before, Abby was very independent before I met her and, you know, like really enjoyed having time to herself. And, you know, as we've been together, I've grown to really appreciate and understand why I also need that for myself. And so, yeah, being able to have separate rigs allows us to have time away from each other. And I, th and again, this is a personal thing. Like if you love being up your partner's ass, like that is your business. I think Abby and I know that it's very vital for us to have time where we get to spend apart. Not only does it reinvigorate the relationship because you get a chance to miss someone, um, you know, like when I'm not with her, I can process things that I like, you know, just process the relationship and it allows me time to get excited to see her again. You know, it reinvigorates um, the relationship, you know, when we do come back together in union. And so it's been really healthy for us to just um, to do such. And I think that, you know, like before when we were living before we lived on the road, like we didn't see each other much, but it was because our jobs, did, you know, didn't allow for us to be together. But to make a conscious choice now that we've been on the road to be like, no, I still want you to have your own time and space and vice versa. So that when we come back together, like we really have that chance to like, you know, be like, damn, I missed you. And, you know, like it. I, so we never get tired of each other. You know, we're not always attached to the hip. And um, I also think that you can lose yourself in a partnership, you know, like it's yeah. Like if you if you're with someone 24 seven, like you, you know, your energies intertwine and you, you know, people talk about their, their other half and their better half. And it's like, my whole philosophy is I don't want to be half and half as one. I want to be one whole person. One whole person is two people enjoying a relationship together. And Abby has really taught me that. And it's been really lovely to, um, to do that, to have our space and to, you know, I think it helps strengthen the bond because like, again, we have time apart and then we get to come back together and, you know, and share new experiences and get really, get re-excited. You know, I don't ever want to lose myself in a partnership. That's not, and I know that she doesn't want to either. Um, you know, we're not one in the same. We're very much two people with our own life experiences that want to experience it together. So um, yeah, never getting tired of, you know, each other because we have the time in separation to appreciate it more. So very grateful for that. I think the other important thing to add there is, look, I'm not trying to speak on a hetero relationship, okay? But with two women, all right, that's a lot. We've been together a decade, okay? In queer years, that's like 20. And that's a lot of synced up periods and a lot of emotions that are happening between two women. So we definitely have to respect each other's space and give time apart. That is a huge bonus in pro. Other couples may relate to this next one. As lovely as it is sharing a bed with your partner, sometimes you just want to stretch out. Take up the whole bed. Well, with two houses and two beds, we can do that. And we like to switch it up. Sometimes we enjoy cuddling and sleeping together, always in the van because the bed is bigger over there. Um, but sometimes we sleep separately. It's nice to have both options, really. So stretch it out, cuddle, whatever we're, we're in the mood for. It's what we do. <laughs> Oh, I had to get outside. It was quite hot in the van. Um, so number four, pro, uh, it helps to build trust and it helps to maintain autonomy. So, you know, Abby and I like having separate rigs. We've spent, we caravan together, but we're not always together. Like we spend blocks of time in the last years, like separate, like for weeks on end, months on end at certain points. So, you know, like obviously you have to have some trust there. You know, you want to trust that the person is doing what they say they're doing and, you know, where they are. Yeah, it's been really good for us because, you know, like that, it, yeah, it forces you to just have that trust for someone else. If you're not always with them, you know, you're not in their space, you know, it, it takes away that like kind of possessive feeling, I guess, like, and it really frees us because I, because I trust her and, she, you know, she can go and do what she wants and vice versa. Like, it's so free because we've let go of all that, like kind of inner monologue that some, they're doing something wrong or like, you know, or that like that stress that you put on yourself in a partnership of always worrying about what the other person is doing you know, and, and jealousy is a very dangerous, very dangerous, uh, you know, rope to be walking. So we've been able to release all of that. And it's been really lovely. Um, for us personally, it's also it's been very helpful, since we've opened our marriage and have been, you know, kind of exploring ethical non monogamy. It, you know, it really asks a lot of you as a person to be secure in yourself and to really look inward, not at the other person at why you're making choices. And, you know, like I've, I, I truly have come to a place because of all of that we've been through to like recognize that I, she's, she's always been supportive and always has like shown me why I can trust her. And so, yeah, it's been really beautiful to have that trust, not, you know, 
traveling separately and it maintains autonomy like you know before i said we both are very independent and we get the opportunity to remember who we are be in our own space and you know have the time to ourselves and like yeah it you don't it just helps you to just maintain your personal you know experience in life and we honor that very much so by living you know sometimes away from each other and we can check in and be like oh what have you been up to and vice versa and it's it's fun it keeps things fun you know like i think being able to trust someone that you're with is so vital and you know like i it it just it, i'm very proud of us i think it's it's a, it's quite a strength and it's helped us to live separately to be able to um to work through that so trust and autonomy boom huge I am a super early riser, like up by 7 a.m. I've literally never been able to sleep in. I don't know why. But Nikki can sleep in a little bit more than I can, but she's also a very light sleeper. So when we lived together in the van, a one-room tiny house, y'all, it was impossible not to wake her up in the mornings. I woke her up every morning. So I'm really grateful that, you know, even if I'm sleeping over with her in the van, I can come here and do my morning routine, which is loud. I can be as loud as I want, and I don't have to worry about waking her up. So I love that for both of us. <laughs> Reason number five, we are married, live in separately, <laughs> is it keeps things fresh and we get to have like fun date nights. Not that you can't have date nights living together, obviously, but like it's kind of fun since we caravan and we can like set up like an outdoor living space and then like, you know, we could dress up if we wanted to. You know, I could like message her and like, what do you want to do tonight? And like maybe have wine and cheese in the space or, you know, I like to have deep conversations and so I'll, like meet up in her rig and like pull tarot or like just, you know, get really like um deep or ask like fun questions, you know. Um and it's just a, like a new way. It's like a, a fun way to keep things fresh. Like, you know, like when we're not living in this box together, like it gives us the opportunity. Like if I want to dress up and surprise her and go over there and like we'll have movie night or, you know, like give her a massage, you know, without her knowing, like having a way to surprise each other, you know, because we're not like on top of each other, or, you know, like if I want to go drive somewhere and, and like get something or, you know, like make a certain dish, like we have the opportunity to like still surprise each other. Um so yeah, it's just a, it's like a, a way to keep things like going, you know, we've been together a long time and we both are, have been in places, you know, where I can't show up emotionally or sexually or whatever the case may be. But like, that doesn't mean that we can't keep things going um, and, and keep things spicy and keep things like new. So that's been really cool. That's been a cool um, thing to navigate, like being apart. So where we could still like invigorate and, and, and give surprise. Um, so yeah. That's a that's been a good one. Nikki and I are actually both introverts who thrive with a lot of alone time. So having the two rigs has given us even more opportunities for quality alone time. And that has been such a benefit to our mental health. So it is for sure a big pro on the pro list. Last but not least on my list, I realize I've been numbering these, but we're going back and forth. So she's going to be laughing all. Good luck at editing that. I love you. We don't have to go to the bathroom in front of each other, y'all. Like, look, that, like, when we first got on the road and, like, being able to, like, poop in front of the other person, like, that speaks volumes for a relationship. And I am so grateful to have had that experience to see how close we can truly be with each other. You know, I don't know a lot of people, partnerships living where you're living in a home and you're, like, in the bathroom with each other. Um, but yeah, that's just, that's just not something that like, I'm very grateful to not have to do that anymore. You know, like we can poop in our separate rigs. She doesn't have to be on top of me in the morning when I'm literally sitting on the pooper and she's like trying to have her coffee, you know, like, I'm sorry, everyone's shit stinks. Like, you know, there's days that it's raining, you can't pop the fan. And it's like, that sucks. Like, it's just not like, there are times when I don't need to be with my partner and that's one of them. So being able to use the bathroom alone has been amazing. And also, like, I don't have to change it as often. You know, when she wasn't here, we went to Baja together and we stored her rig. And, like, you know, since I got the new composting toilet and I had to switch that thing so quickly and the pee tank so quickly. And it's just, yeah, it's annoying. So uh, that's a great one. You know, we if we miss each other and we want to talk, she can message me on her pooper and I could poop in my pooper and we could talk. But nah. No, it's been so lovely to wake up and have my own routine with my shitter. And 
yeah, she doesn't have to be on top of me for that. So great reason. So those were all my pros. I have two cons that I was able to come up with. Yeah, I, I don't want it to seem like, oh, everyone go live not with your partner. That's not what this is about. So there are moments like when I'm on, like we're traveling separately, where like I'll witness something really beautiful. Like last night, oh my God, for example, there was a huge storm that came through where I'm parked at and it broke and then the sun came down below the clouds were like black and then it created this incredible rainbow a full rainbow and the wind was like blowing and like i was outside on the roof deck and i was like watching other people that were also witnessing the sunset and um it, it was so beautiful and i just had a moment where obviously i just like wish abby was there to see it with me you know and i caught myself because i started to facetime her which obviously like that's there's not a guarantee she's an answer. Like it doesn't, she's not necessarily gonna have service, but also it's taking me out of the present moment because I'm like so focused. I'm like, oh, immediately like, ah, oh, my partner would love this, you know? Or the other night I saw a moose eating out of a tree, like literally 20 feet from me. And so, yeah, we've had plenty of moments and I know that happens for her too. We're like, obviously we wish that the other person could be there to witness what we are witnessing. Um, so yeah, there, that's, that's definitely a reason why every now and then, you know, when she's not with me, and I have those experiences that, you know, I am like, oh, but, you know, that's, I guess that's, I don't know if that's a con, but that's like, you know, um, I didn't, um, something <laughs> that's like, well, maybe not, maybe not a con, but just like a, you know, like a, a damn, wish you could, wish you were here kind of thing. So, yeah. I'd say the biggest downside to having two tiny homes on wheels instead of just one is the cost of fuel, for sure. It sucks, but it's still worth it, honestly, yeah. <laughs> Look at my babies. Oh my gosh. They're so cute, I love them so much. Y'all wanna know the biggest bummer when Nikki and I travel separately? I know she's making a ton of food and I'm not there to eat it. All that delicious food. She can't cook for one. She can hardly even cook for two. She cooks for like 12, okay? She cooks for everyone. Last con um, as to why living separately is not the best thing is that I, it's almost impossible for me to make a meal for one person. Yeah, that's it. Um, I, I love cooking for people. You all know that. And, you know, even when Abby was living with me, like I, we would still have quite a lot of leftovers. I'm just, I'm used to like entertaining and like, and like giving, you know, giving my love language to the masses of people that I've met on the road. And so like when it's just me, boy, it's quite the challenge. So that would definitely be a con of just uh, not being able to make one singular meal for me to enjoy. So for the end of this video, I'm actually going to challenge myself to do that. We're going to make a meal together and I'm going to make just enough for me to eat tonight so that I don't have a bunch of leftovers in the fridge. So, um, yeah, good luck to me. <laughs> I literally cut half the jalapeno and I'm telling you, I already feel like that's too much. I can't make one meal. Pro tip, if you've been cutting peppers like jalapenos, make sure you wash your hands afterwards. Cause when you go to the bathroom later, you're trying to have some sexy time or whatever it is you're doing. I'm telling you, I've been there and it is not fun. <laughs> so get the spice off your fingers. Okay. So this is some cumin and coriander seeds. Gonna go in there with the oil. I'm gonna put some paprika, um, a little bit of cinnamon. Cause I'm getting silly in it. A little garlic. Uh, yeah, mix it all together. A little salt. Got my shredded tofu. Put the jalapeno in there. Got our spice mix. Gonna blend it all together. Yum. So I'm gonna bake it at like 400. We're gonna try like half an hour. Let's see if we can get it crispy. Bye. So while the tofu is baking, I'm gonna make my taco shells. My four or five taco shells. No more than that. Um, I'm gonna use blue corn. I'm gonna make them because I have plenty of time on my hands here at camp and it's so much, it's so simple to make them. And because they just come with a lot of preservatives when you're at the store, it's like, it's literally just corn and water when I'm doing it myself. So wish me luck that I don't make 20 of these. Oh my God, we did it. Look at this, four taco shells. <gasps> okay, okay, we did it. I can do it. Thank you for challenging me, YouTube. so it stays nice and warm. <laughs> Bobby got me this, I love it. Oh my God, I think I actually pulled it off. <gasps>
Well, these are bigger tacos. I don't know if I'm gonna have all four, but like still, I, I pretty much did it, y'all. Proud. Yama. Oh, okay. So I did it. I pulled it off. I made just enough. I have like a couple extra taco shells, but I will definitely eat those. So we'll see how it tastes. Here we take a bite. Mmm. Yum. That's so good. I'll put the link in the description for the um the recipe. Challenge you to make your own taco shells and shred your tofu. Um thanks for hanging out with us. We'll catch you on the next video. Bye. These videos are made possible through the support of our patrons. Join the Ride and Seek crew on Patreon today. Thank you, crew!